Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast. I am your host, Xavier, and today I got another live dope, dope episode for y'all. But before we uh, get into it, I want y'all to like, subscribe, uh, leave that five-star rating, review, do all those things. We're trying to run those numbers up, y'all. So if y'all could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. And today, I got a, uh, like I said, I got a dope guest, man. His name is Eugene, fresh out of Tampa. I'm glad to have him here to get it done. What's appreciate good, bro? Welcome to the up, show. What's up? What's up? What's good? Appreciate to be here. Yeah, man. I'm glad to have you here. So just, just getting right into it, man. So let the people know who you is. Just give a, a good, a good brief background on yourself, just for the people that may have been stuck on their rock first time seeing you. Yeah, 100, percent man. So my name is Eugene. I've been an entrepreneur well over 10 years. I'm actually here from Florida, Tampa, Florida. Um, I've been in the financial services industry business and the car business, and then we transitioned to doing short-term rental and Airbnb. Been doing that for a couple of years, and it's building and expanding that business, and it's taking things to the next level. Okay. Like that. Okay, okay. Airbnb. So how, how long you been doing that? Yo, three years. Three years. Yeah. Dang. So that, that industry, because that's a, first of all, how, because I'm, I'm, I'm been seeing you on the gram. You've been uh, going crazy, just getting, just, you steadily getting something new. So how has that process been work? Because I know a lot of people, they was getting scared, especially after COVID and things yeah. like that. So how does it been with you? Yeah, it's been actually been pretty good. And it's actually a good time when people kind of retreat and get scared because guess what? More opportunity. Really? For, for me, you know what I'm saying? Because there's so many deals out there and you got people that's backing off. And it's still more profit for me to go out there and make. So that's why I'm always on the grind, adding new units to the portfolio. So it's actually a good time to get into it. Mm. Actually, especially since after COVID, it's been a peak because people been on lockdown in 2020, so they couldn't travel. Right. And then once things opened up, everybody and their mom wanted to travel. You know what I'm saying? Facts. That's facts. <laughs> facts. That's facts. So it's it been real profitable ever since, you know, after COVID. Mm, mm. Talk about this, though. Why is um, the Airbnb route? Because some people might hear this. This may be their first time just hearing getting Airbnb to get in real estate. Why is that route so-called better, you think, than just traditionally going to buy and fix and flip and all that stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great question. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's better, but different. I think it's, it's different, but mm -hmm. also easy for people to get into and don't got a lot of capital. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, let's say right. someone I want to get into traditional real estate, they may not have, you know, ten to maybe fifty thousand dollars to put down on the house, you know what I'm saying? Or to buy an investment. But when you look at Airbnb, you have a way you can get into rental arbitrage where you don't have to own the property. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So now people that have no money at all, you know what I'm saying? They can probably leverage their credit or they could, you know, do rental arbitrage, rent somebody else's property and then put on Airbnb and make money. So technically you're getting to real estate without having to buy no property at all. And you still get to make the same cash flow even more sometimes. Mm. And when you doing, when you go this route and you're trying to get into Airbnb, this like, this will always pop, in my, pop up in my head. And I heard other people say something similar. Like, if this is something you want to do, when you go into a building, are you talking and you going into a leasing office and say, I want an Airbnb, or are you just not saying anything? Like, how nah. does that work? No, no, no. So that's the wrong thing to, wrong thing to do. You okay. know what I'm saying? Number one, what I tell people, you want to present yourself as a business. So you want to make sure you have your LLC, your EA number, Dunn's really? number, build up, you know, business credit, and then you approach the apartment complex. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go that route and let them know you're looking to do short-term rental or corporate leasing. You know what I'm saying? And that where you're coming to them as a, as a business. Because sometimes when you say Airbnb, is like a red flag. Right. Because first thing in their mind is like, hold on, you're trying to do parties over here and things like that. But when you explain the business model, hey, look, I'm a business. I do short-term rental. And, you know, I use third-party marketing like, you know, Airbnb and Verbo. But first, I'm a short-term rental company. You know what I'm saying? Now, they're more likely to listen to your approach and allow you to do short-term rental on Airbnb in that location. Yeah. So I tell people, go out there, make sure you get your LLC, your EN number, build your business credit, and then start looking for apartments. How do, how, I, was say, I was just going to say, how do you find the apartments that allow that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's a lot that, that do it. And very first thing, you know, I tell people to use is Zillow, apartments.com. You can look for rentals. But when you're looking for rentals, you want to have a strategy. So what I do is I approach an apartment complex knowing that they may have a low occupancy rate. You know what I'm saying? Meaning that they're not fully occupied. For example, really? let's say it's a 200 you know, unit apartment and that apartment is only occupied 150. And then the other 50 is not occupied yet. That means they need that other 50 occupied. Right. So the way that you determine if they need occupancy, you're going to see specials, one month free special, two month free special. You know what I'm saying? They're going to offer special to fill up the rooms. So what I do is I approach them and if they have a special, obviously looking for someone to take a unit. So they're going to be more likely to allow you to do short term rental on Airbnb so they can fill up the occupancy rate. Damn. So that's a strategy I use. I look for apartments that have specials going on because guess what? They need us because we help them make money. Right. It's a win-win right. situation. That's right. Yeah. So, is you you doing it everywhere? Cause or are you just doing it in Florida? Um, all of ours are in Florida. Okay. You know, so all of us are in Florida. So we got them Tampa, Orlando, and then Fort Lauderdale, South Florida. How you like managing? How do you manage all those? You because you know Tampa and Orlando and Miami. That's good distance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So great question. So what we do? You want to have systems. 
You know what I'm saying? When I first got into it, we didn't have a system to play. So then we started thinking, okay, how can we do it and build a system and strategy where I don't have to work with us all the time? Like I'm here right now in Texas, but guess what? My business still operating without me. Without you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we create systems so we have automations. And the way that you do that is you get tools such as uh, like a channel manager that will send What's automated that? messages to okay, your guests okay. Okay, and okay. manage all of your units. And then you could go out there and also get a, uh, get a handyman team. So that way, if anything breaks, they could take care of a unit for you. Get a cleaning team. And the other thing that we do as well, too, is we have like a, a pricing tool that'll do the pricing by itself. So when you look at hotels, the price always fluctuate based on demand. And you could use a tool such as Price Labs or Beyond Pricing, where it does the pricing strategy for you so you can maximize your profits. So we have like systems that we set up. And then another strategy that we use is setting up a virtual desk with a VA. So a virtual assistant, they'll take care of all the questions, the requests. So that way we're not always needed. We're just managing it. We're not always working in the business, working on it. Hey, you going? You going in, man? I yeah. got so I got so many questions about this because this at one point this is something I was thinking about doing. And one of the questions I want to ask you is: so when you get a unit, are you going to like buy furniture? Because that that seems like that's a expensive like yeah. uh, business model. If you like always got to buy furniture for a new spot, like how yeah. do that work? Yeah, yeah. So great question. So the approach that we take is we leverage OPM. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna leverage business credit to be able to go out okay, there and okay. get furniture. You know right. what I'm saying? So we don't have to come out of pocket. And what I tell, like my mentees, what I tell people that are looking to get into it, if you don't have a lot of capital, that's okay. You can leverage business credit. Um, and then you have furniture stores such as Wayfair, Ikea, they have business line of credit where you can purchase furniture, purchase furniture all on your business side, business credit, and you can furnish your unit. So all you're doing is leveraging the bank money to be able to go out Science. and get your business off of the ground. And what I tell people like this, think about it because... That most people think, you know what, if I save all my money, I put it into the bank, I'm going to make money. You ain't making no money. Nope. The bank's making all that money. Because think mm -hmm. about it. You put all your money into the savings account, they only give you 0.001% of your money. Right? Yep. But guess what they're doing? They take your they money, invest they it. invest it, <laughs> they can make anywhere from 15 to 19% of your money. But I always ask people, do you think it's fair that the bank could do that and you only get 1%? You know what I'm saying? What do you think? I wouldn't... It's definitely, <laughs> it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a finesse. Yeah, but yeah. But if you don't know better... Yeah, you don't know no better. Right. You're right. You don't know better. So I think it's fair. I was about to say, yeah, I, I think I'll it's say, fair. I think it's fair. And most people are like, what you mean, Eugene, you think it's fair? I think it's fair because guess what? We could run the same play. Exactly. We could borrow their money, invest it, <laughs> right. pay them back and keep the profit. You're right. So no. So we got to understand, we got to put ourselves into the banking mindset, leveraging their money because they're using our money to make more money, but we was taught the wrong thing. We was exactly. taught to save our way to wealth and you can't do that. I never met a person that saved their way to wealth. You got to know how to invest, but better yet, invest somebody else's money. Right? You don't take all the risks. Invest somebody else's money. You make the profit and keep the difference. And you pay them back and you keep the difference. So that's what we do when we're getting our furniture. We're going to leverage credit to get the furniture, get it set up. And then all of our booking is going to pay back the bank and we keep the difference of the profit. So technically, the guest is covering all the costs. Damn. All we're doing is setting up the play, making a profit, and that's it. So that's all we're doing. That's crazy. And then what I also do is I look for private landlords because they need us as well, wow. too. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you you do Airbnbs with, with both too? Okay, both. okay. I see, so I see. we have some houses and then we have some apartments. So we do both. That's dope, bro. We 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 do both, and you know, I want you to think about like think about people that have you know um, properties. They have tenants, and sometimes they're tired of that regular tenant because they always got to evict them or replace them once they leave out. Yeah, they got to refix their property if they damage your property. But you have a business that's taking over your your property for you. Don't have to worry about them damaging it because we're using it for business. We want to make sure it's maintained. So most landlords sometimes, once they hear our business model, they're going to be more they're open to renting to us. They yeah, know what? Well, absolutely. I know you're going to pay me rent on time and my property's going to be maintained. So we use the same approach. We reach out to private landlords. We leverage Zillow or we leverage a real estate agent. They reach out to the private landlord for us. We let them know, hey, this is our model. We do short-term rental. We house people that's traveling and we're going to maintain your property. We got insurance. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get your rent on time. And most of them are open to it. And that's something that we do because... Property owners, private landlords, they just want to get their money. They want to get their bread. That's it. Get their money. Mm -hmm. We make our money. The guest is happy. They got a nice experience because they don't want to be at a hotel sometimes. Facts. And now they could go out and make things happen. So at this point, how many Airbnb units do you have? And we have well over 25 in the portfolio. <laughs> Damn. And yeah. how, long, how long did it take you to acquire 25? I want to say it, it took a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? It took a couple of years. When I first got in, into it, you know, I was thinking about how can I invest my money and make it a quick return? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, me and my wife, we owned a traditional real estate property. So we owned like a duplex. Right. And was getting rent every month. Once a month, by the fifth of the month. Yep. And the profit was okay. You know, I love owning property. So I tell people do both. But, 
we, it's we probably get quicker. Yeah, it's quick. Yeah. Where Airbnb is quicker. So yeah. I was thinking, you know, because every time around January through April, we make a lot of money. And I'm like, what can we put our money into? It can make quick return. If I buy another duplex, it may take me a long time to recoup all of my money. So I said, you know what? Let me learn about this industry, learn about the game of Airbnb, because I thought you always had to buy a property to do Airbnb. Exactly. Exactly. Once I find out about rental arbitrage, I say, okay, let's run the play. And we did it. But when we got our first location, I was looking to get one location, one unit. There's one unit. There's one unit. When I went to apartment complex, that apartment complex needed to increase the occupancy rate. So when I went to go do a tour, I liked it. I said, hey, look, I want to run the play. Can I do short term? I said, yeah, you could do it. I did the tour. I said, okay, I want it. I want to, you know, take the unit. They were like, well, how many units do you want? I'm like, how many units can I get? <laughs> you know? And then he was like, well, you can get three. You know, um, I showed him, you know, my bank, he's like, hey, you just make sure you can afford it. I showed him my bank statements. He let me get three units at that time. And what we did, we reinvested the money, you know, so when we made that smart. profit, you put the money back into the business, yep. you know what I'm saying? And that's how it was able to grow so fast. So we literally got the first unit set up within three days later, we got a booking for two months. So that was like a, a I want to say seven, that's, $8,000 payout, right seven, $8,000 payout off that one unit. So we took the money, we put it back into the business to another location. And that's what we kept doing and rolling it back into the business till we built a portfolio, built a portfolio. to where it's at. And that's what most people sometimes understand. When you have a business, you got to know how to be disciplined. Just because you see the money doesn't mean you can touch it yet. Because guess what? It's not yours yet. You still got to pay IRS. Right. You still got business expense. <laughs> ain't your money yet. <laughs> you know? You and right, bro. You right. And that's what a lot of people mess up at. So I understood that. Like, you know what? Well, let me put the money back into the business to grow the business. So that's, that's how we was able to grow it really fast. Just putting it back into the business, roll into it, and, and let it grow. Man, you... you, you uh. You dropping, you dropping some heavy gems, bro. Because like I said, this is an industry that's very uh, sought after. But with that being said, let me ask you this. So, so somebody watching this, listening, how much money do they like realistically need if they want to get into this industry? Yeah, I would say anywhere from five to 8,000. Okay. To get, to get your first unit because you got to probably pay the first month. You got expenses, right? You got business right. costs, cost of doing business. So first month rent that you have to pay, maybe secure, a small security deposit mm -hmm. and then furnished in the unit. So let's say it's a one bedroom, typical average for a one bedroom be anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. Security deposit if it's an apartment, usually from three to 600. And then furnishing it. It may cost you, you know, from two to $3,000 put furnishing to the unit. Yep. They get everything set up, get professional photos, and you list it on Airbnb and get everything going. So I'll say realistically about five to six, seven thousand $7,000 to get your first unit up and rolling. But you can limit that cost in two ways. Okay. Number one, leveraging credit yep. to cover the cost. But the other thing I tell people, well, let's say your credit's not in order, right? You got bad credit, you made some mistakes, you went in the credit in order, but you still want to get into the game. What I show people is you could co-host a unit. What's that? So basically, you could, someone to have an Airbnb property, they don't want to manage it, you can manage it for them and charge a percentage. So kind of like a property management company. Right. But you could do it with Airbnb. Most people don't know about know. that. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? And the way you could find them is, I always tell my mentees or I tell people, you could go to a site called cohostmarket.com. And it's going to give you a list of Airbnb properties that people want somebody else to manage it. What? Yeah. So now, let's say someone got that's no money. It. No, one, They don't got no money. They can manage somebody else's property, charge them 10% of the revenue. They bring it in. And it's a lot of Airbnbs that's making good money. Yeah. So let's say a property is bringing in $4,000 a month. You charge 10%. That's $400. You don't have to spend no money out your pocket. All you're doing is sending messages to guests. You're sending messages to the cleaning team to clean a property. And that's pretty much it. And you're collecting your 10% for the month just for managing it. But let's say you get five of those that you're managing. That's an extra $2,000 passive you making a month without using none of your own money to get a property. It's not your property at all. All you're doing is co-hosting it. And then what I even tell people, you can have it on autopilot as well too. How? Oh. Get a virtual assistant. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Get a, get a VA. Right. You pay them about right. four or $5 an hour. You know what I'm saying? They manage everything and you collect in profit monthly. You stack up, go out and get your own Airbnb. So technically, you're not using no money to get into it with that strategy. Damn. Yeah, you just dropped some game, bro. That's it. I never heard of that before. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't never heard of that. So like, um, how, like I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of a way to ask this because, you know, me and my says people always want to know about the bread. If you mind sharing, what's been your highest grossing month doing Airbnbs? My hot man, you I can't tell all that. Now. Uh, <laughs> no, but my hot, my highest my honestly, um, I seen it and it been like this consistently now. Was like revenue growing wise was like 80, 80 to like ninety thousand. That it grew. That's good money, and bro. we first hit that. Um, and I say we because me and my wife do the business together. Yeah, right. We did that last year. I want to say last year August. We was able to scale it doing that last year August. 
what did y'all do to scale it to that point? Because a lot of times as business owners, we get something, we get the we get the ball rolling, but the scaling part, mm -hmm. you know, that's probably the hardest part of business. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, it is, it is. So what we did because, you know, in our entrepreneurship years, you know, because we've been in business for well over 10 years, we learned from the mistakes that we made in the past. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So once we, you know, before, once we got the money, we was just spend it or did whatever with it. But this time we kept putting money back into the business, back into the business. But another thing that helped us scale it really fast was understanding and finding a niche and then also branding. You know what I'm saying? Once we understood that, hey, we could find a niche in this industry brand. and brand it properly, we could scale up and then dominate. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's some people doing Airbnb, but it's a lot of room to make money. Looking at the numbers, Airbnb is value at well over hundred billion dollars. Really? Yeah, they value their value anywhere from seven to hundred billion billion dollars. Their value, and it's a lot of room to make money, but you can niche it down. And what I mean is, what we began to focus on was high end clientele, right? We focus on travel nurses, we focus on travel workers, and cater to them. And the reason why is because they typically look to stay anywhere from a month to three months at a time. So you get a lump sum of money. So let's say for the month to stay at one of our apartments, it's a one bedroom, one bathroom, nice location, nice view. You want $5,000 for the month. They stay there for three months. That's $15,000 that you get up, up front. So that's what we begin to niche on is travel nurses, travel nurses and high end clientele. And that's what was able to help us really scale it and grow really fast. Is, is just getting um, nice like luxury places to stay, uh, the way to get them, or y'all y'all finding and marketing these high end clients in a different way. Yeah, so we market in different ways. So we do a few things. So a few things that we do is one is the brand. We want to make yeah. sure our brand is there. So what we do outside, because most people they just put all the eggs in one basket. It is depend on Airbnb or Verbo or Booking.com do all the marketing for you. You gotta understand. You want to leverage it to do the marketing, but you also want to put your own brand behind it. So we set up a website. So we have our own direct booking website where clientele could book through us. That's fire. Right? So now we cut out the middleman. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we do is we target them. It's just like you fishing. You want a particular fish, you got to put a different type of uh, bait on the hook. You know what I'm saying? You can't put the same bait for every fish if you're going fishing, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we market in different areas. So we make sure we put our location. We're looking for a location. We're looking near a hospital or near downtown in the area. So now we're going to attract that travel nurse that want to work at a Tampa General Hospital that want to work at a hospital but don't want to be at a hotel because they typically get a stipend. So we put it at a different location. And then what we also do is we also have our, uh, our VA assistant reach out to local hospitals, lo local urgent cares, and we ask them, hey, do you have a vendor list that we could get on, right? And if you ever need uh, housing for any, like, travel nurse or anything like that, can we be one of the point of contact? Damn. So that's one thing that we do. And then when we get a travel nurse, we build that report with them. They know our direct booking website. So anytime they want to come back, we're the first person they think about. So we get repeat clients doing that as well, too. What's the what's the biggest uh, lesson you learned from doing Airbnbs the time you've been doing it? Like an L you took that, that you learned about it helped? Yeah. Um, I want to say the biggest L, one of the biggest L, not the, I want to say like an L that I took a learning lesson from it, but lessons you learn from it. You right. know what I'm saying? So I want to say, like, not understanding how to set up rules. You know what I'm saying? Like the people that's visiting. The people that's visiting. You, about that you know what I'm saying? Not setting yeah. the rules and putting the rules in the description. So we didn't put no policy into place. So, like, hey, you know, hey, you can't smoke in the unit. We didn't put no policy for that. Then we had some people smoking the unit. Then you, know you got to pay. Then, you know, we didn't put a policy into it. And then we had to get the unit clean and, you know, make sure that it's ready for the next guest that's coming. So what we learned is, like, you know what? Put a policy, hey, we're going to fine you $500 if you smoke in a unit. You know what I'm saying? And now that prevents people that want to smoke, hey, you know what? I'm not going to book that oh, unit. Yeah. But if I do, let me go outside and find a place somewhere else to do it so I don't smoke in a unit. Because what that does is mess up business. Because if the place smells like smoke, maybe our next guest don't want to be there because it smells like smoke. So we took a couple of L's losing money because of that. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. one L that we took. But another thing I learned as well, too, is getting, um, making sure that we're documenting everything. And we're getting pictures. Because another L that I took was a learning lesson. It has some kids break a window. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Break a window in one of the units, right? The, the kids broke a window. It was actually one of the houses that was renting out. It was playing, doing something. And he shattered one of the windows. You had no policy in place at the time? We had no policy in the place. But luckily, what we was able to do is they had insurance. And was able to put a claim on our insurance and get reimbursed mm. for the damages. You know what I'm saying? For, for, for the units. So what I always tell people is make sure... 
you know, that you're taking pictures before pictures, they damage it. You take after pictures, you get an estimate how much it costs. So that way you can put a claim in if it's booked on Airbnb or Verbo. But if you're going to do direct booking, you also want to get um, short to renter insurance as well, too. Okay. So you can use an insurance Makes company sense. called Proper Insurance. So let's say you're, you're booking off of Airbnb and Verbo, you could still insure they stay. If they do damage your property, you could put a claim in and you cover it. Yo, you, yo, this is crazy. Like, cause this, this is an industry that's, it, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of stuff to it that I think a lot of people don't know about. Cause it sound, you might hear people talk about getting an Airbnb and they make it sound like it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. go somewhere, get a career, put a furniture yeah, yeah, and yeah, just yeah. start making money. Yeah, yeah. Cause a lot of people think, you know what? Well, man, you don't want to get into it cause it's trending, it's popular. Exactly. It's it may be low popular. risk. Everything have risk. You know, it's risking in business, but you got to understand the risk. It's not a, a high, high risk, but it got risk. Most people think, oh, there's right. no risk. Let me get into it. It's trending. And I'm going to see if I can win. But you got to understand it has risk. And most people, they want a quick come up. Yep. It's not going to be cool. You got to put some work in. You got to put some time. You got to stay consistent, just like anything else that you do. Mm. Let me ask you this. Regarding cleaning, do you advise the people to go clean their units themselves or hire a professional cleaning service? Yeah, so no, no. We hire a professional cleaning okay. service. So we have a cleaning company that we use locally. Been using it for ever since we started. And, you know, we charge the guest a fee. So, so we charge, the guests paying for yeah, the, the guests are paying for the cleaning. So we don't have to come out of pocket. So the guests paying. That's guess why them paying. fees be hitting like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the guests the guess, the guess paying for it. So we ain't paying for it. Damn. So we just setting everything up. We have a system. So we charge guests for the cleaning. And then the cleaning company cleans the unit. And that's Yo. it. Turns it over. That's it. Simple. That's it. Damn. That, yeah, this is a... This a uh, Cause I know you 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 teach this as well. So yeah. let people know, like, because I know people gonna hear this and they're gonna be like, "Damn, is this something I want to get into?" He could help me uh, get into it. Let the people know where they could uh, find you, so you could teach them this game. That yeah, you're yeah, yeah, about. yeah, one hundred percent. So yeah, you guys could definitely follow me on on Instagram at Mister Eugene zero six on Instagram. And then um, if you guys want to learn more about it, what we do is we also do a a free masterclass, giving giving people the game as well, showing them how to get into it. What, well. what, 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 what are y'all covering in the master class? Oh, so the master class, so we're showing them how to locate properties anywhere in the country. Then we're showing them how to get into it with zero money in the pocket. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we go ahead and get into it, how to set it up, how to furnish it, and then how to get it listed. Is, is it a good idea? Let's say you somewhere, you live somewhere where it may not be a lot of Airbnbs. Is it a good idea to like do it virtually? Because it seems like it might be harder to like have an Airbnb unit from a virtual side. Yeah, yeah. Well, what you could you could do it virtually. You know right. what I'm saying? We got some mentees that's they're in a different state and they, and got, they got units in Florida. And that's they do cool. everything virtually. So we show them the systems, how to automate the whole process so it's hands off from them and they can still cash flow. Cause maybe they market is not the best market to do it in. So we also do a market research analysis before we acquire any unit. Really? We want to know the numbers because the money is made in the front end. So we do something which is considered comps in real estate, comparables. Mm -hmm. So we use like AirDNA, MashVisor.com to see how much can that particular unit make. We get the address. If it's a one-bedroom apartment, two-bedroom apartment, or a house, how much can that unit make us monthly and yearly? What's the per percentage occupancy rate that will be there? Would it be 60% occupied a month, 70% occupied a month? And then we say, you know, we want to go ahead and do it because I have a few mentees. Their marketplace is not a good marketplace to do it. Right. Right? Based on the numbers and the analytics. So we say, no, nah, it's not a good move. I think you should do it in a different state and decide to do it in Florida. So yeah, you could do it virtually. Yeah, Florida, Florida seemed like a, one of those states where yeah. everybody can stay in Airbnbs and they go to Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Florida, Florida, it's a win-win because you know most people come down here because you know we got the weather. Yep. Florida, people come, we got the weather, we got the beaches, um, it's good for business and a lot of stuff going on in Florida. So I think Florida's a great market, definitely doing it. In. What would you say, say, let's say if somebody listens to this and they, um, where you, you said you started a business 11 years ago, right? Yeah, so about 11 they, years ago, yeah. Say they... 11, where you were 11 years ago, and let's say they don't got too many funds, no capital, but this is something they want to get into. What's your best piece of actionable advice for them so they could get that, that ball rolling? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So one thing, you know, I was thinking about this, and I said, man, I was thinking about, man, my journey, what really got me here? What did I do to kind of get where I'm at today? Not just in the Airbnb business, but just in Airbnb. business and life. And we got to look at our current situation. And I was sick and tired, like, about 12, 13, about 13 years ago, 12, 13, I was sick and tired of my situation, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, struggling. You know what I'm saying? I had to make a decision that I wanted more. You know what I'm saying? And I had that mindset, you know what? I'm going to do something different. So first you got to make a decision that you want to do something different. Then the other thing that you have to do is figure out your environment. Because if you are around a whole bunch of people that don't want to do nothing with their life, you're going to be just like them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when most people, they're comfortable in the situation. So you have to get to a point where you're not comfortable. You got to get to a point you're not afraid to cut people off. You're not afraid to cut friends off. 
You're not afraid not to even cut your family off. You got to oh, do it. That's deep right there. You got to do it. Because in order for you to really go up, you got to let certain things go. You ain't lying, but I know I, I have this conversation with a lot of people. And you know, a lot. Of it, this is, they got them family members that they know is like, they may mean good. Sometimes they don't mean good at all. But it's Facts. like, at the end of the day, man, it's still my family. I still got to, like, what what you say to people like that? Man, you you just got to, you, you really got to put yourself first at one point. Your family, your fam, your family got to understand, like, your family, your friends, whoever it is, have to understand, you know, you got to put your first, yourself first. They may not understand it at that time, but you got to put yourself first. You know what I'm saying? And you got to let them know, hey, look, well, I respect you because what I did when I was looking to become a full-time entrepreneur, I quit my job. My pops like, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? You, quit your, you just graduated school and you're going to be a full-time entrepreneur. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to work this job no more. I'm like, look, I respect you, pops. As my, as my dad, you raised me, but I don't respect you to take financial advice from you. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I had that mentality because you're struggling. You know, you was living paycheck to paycheck raising me. You know, you were a single father because my, my mom passed away. You know, if I do the same thing you did, I'm going to get the same results. So I got to do the opposite. So you got to have that conversation with your family and your friends. Because if not, you're going to be at the same place, the same, you know, environment that you're in. So in order for you to go up, you got to let certain, th certain things go. Have to. You got to let certain people go. And I say certain things go because certain people don't let go of bad habits. Like, if you, if you don't got $100,000 in your bank account right now, saved up, and you watching TV, you need to take that TV and throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to take that TV and throw it away. You know what I'm saying? Because it's an income reducer. Like, what you watching TV? If you don't deserve TV. Like, if, you, if you're really trying to change your life and build financial, that's if you want to build financial freedom. Mm. If you're comfortable where you at, watch TV all right. day long. Right. Watch TV all day long. But if you're really trying to level up, real talk, most people won't say this. You need to throw that TV away. You need to throw distractions away. You need to be locked in a certain period of time so you can go out there and elevate. You know what I'm saying? So cut distractions off, be locked in, make a decision that you want more, and go all in. Mm. And one thing people forget to do, man, is focus. They, they, don't, they don't focus. They, they're all over the place. So many if, distractions. So many distractions. And you have to cut it off. So I would say focus, make that decision that you want to level up, cut people off, and, and go to the next level. So... Distractions is such a, um, especially today, man, it's so many. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Trust so me. many. You got, you know, social media alone brings a billion different distractions. Oh, yeah. So how do you limit those distractions? You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. if you're a young person that don't got much that, like, they listen, hearing what you're saying, they're like, man, I need to throw away my TV. I ain't got my TV, but now I got TikTok. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, how do you limit all these distractions? Man, um, you, you got to be disciplined. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You got to be disciplined because you could be motivated. Motivation going to die, die off. Facts. But you got to get disciplined. You know what I'm saying? That you got to look at your, your reason why you're doing it. And I think that's what a lot of people miss out of like, what's the reason why? Because if it's just about making quick money, real quick, just about the money, you're going to really give up and quit. When stuff get tough, you're not making fact. money right away. You're not having success right away. You're going to quit. Straight up. Facts. You're going to quit. But when you get disciplined about your reason why, you're doing it for your family, you're doing it for your future, you're tired of struggling, you want financial freedom, you want time freedom, you're going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So that meaning that you got to delete Instagram off your phone for a little bit, you're going to delete that thing off your phone because social media is a lot of distraction now. Mm -hmm. Especially now. Back mm -hmm. in the day, we only had Facebook. My we space. had MySpace. You My know space. what I'm saying? Yeah. Your top 10 friends list. <laughs> but now you got Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Twitter, YouTube. Twitter, you got all the distractions. So you got to be so locked in and you got to let people know, you know what? This is personal. Most people are like, well, you know what? It's, it's, it's not personal, just business. Nah, bro. Nah, mm. sis. It is personal. Mm. It's your life on the line. It's your future on the line. It's your kid's life on the line. So you got to get it up to a point. Let me cut off distractions, right? If you know that your, your friends want to go out on the weekends all the time and they get you in a bad environment that distract you, don't go out because you're going to be in that environment that gets you distracted. Get you distracted. Now you knocked off course. Now you got to start back all over again. Mm. So you got to get... That discipline, when you cut off all those distractions and be focused on that goal, so that we go to the next level. That, yo, that's 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 some heavy game, bro. I think sometimes many people we don't realize or understand that that focusness is not. I think when people hear that, they think like, man, I gotta do this for the rest of my <laughs> life. I can't have no fun. <laughs> Where it's really just time periods that you need yeah. to really do that to lock in. Then you could, you know, if you want to kick it for a while, you could go back into doing it. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 one hundred. And I think that even come with business too, because sometimes people will jump around different businesses. Man. They'll jump around. You for one minute they're doing this, <laughs> next week they're doing this, no the sense. other one they're doing this. Like, how can you catch momentum with any business? You jump all around the place. Okay. So for us, we say, man, you want to focus. You want to focus on one course 
until successful. I believe the same thing. Bro. You know, once you become successful in that area, then you can, because people get caught in this whole multiple streams of income. Mm. I want to do this, I want to do this, but you can't be everywhere at the same time. So you got to be focused period of time, but don't look at someone else chapter 20 and you're in your chapter one. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get knocked off focus. So don't look at what they got going on. Be locked in what you building. It's going to take time. It's not going to be overnight. It's going to be overnights building what you got going that's, on. That's real. That's real. You, <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't build multiple strings, multiple strings of income if you ain't got no money. Nah, facts. And to get the money, you have to focus, prioritize one thing in the beginning. That's it. Like, that's, that, that's, that's really that simple. But at the end of the day, like you said, the internet, you hear somebody say, let's get, you can make a million dollars doing this, make a million dollars doing this. They got a shoddy syndrome. like, they, 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 they everywhere. People get everywhere. So you got to get to a point where you focus on one thing. You know what I'm saying? You learn it. You become a student to the game. And that's one thing I feel a lot of people don't want to do. They don't want to take the time to learn a skill and really learn it. It takes time to learn. You want to learn something. You know what I'm saying? You want to learn it. You want to master it. That's right. why I tell people, you want to you wanna, you wanna master it. That's come with mastery. You don't want to just learn it, but you want to master it. So even when it comes to, look, hey, I'm looking to do this business, master that business. You want to look to learn how to do Airbnb, learn how to master it, get some game about it, learn about it, research about it, right? And then that's how you can become successful in one area, and then maybe you could invest into different things. Let, let me uh, ask you this, because you found your lane, you found your niche with Airbnb. How does someone that don't know their lane, got no niche, how do they recognize it and say, this is it for me? Yeah. The, the only way I tell people, if, if you kind of relate with it, you got a vibe for it, try it out. Try it out because you want to see the way that you can see if something's for you is by doing it. Like you can't look at something and be like, okay, I don't, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if it's for me, I, but you didn't try it yet. You know what I'm saying? So I think doing it, you know, see, like if you, if you got, it piqued your interest, go ahead and learn about it. it. You know what I'm saying? Learn about it and then try it out. Mm. And then try it's it out. that simple. And that, yeah, try it out. And it's, and again, it's not going to be where it's going to be, you're going to become successful in that thing overnight. Stay consistent at it for a period of time. You know what I'm saying? And something that you do, you're not always going to be, I tell people you're not always going to be passionate about it in the beginning. That's what, you're not. Mm -mm. You're not. Because again, sometimes it's a grind. You have some ups and downs. I, I, I'll be lying if I tell people I don't get frustrated sometimes. I don't have issues arise sometimes. I'm gonna, that's real life. You're going to have some problems happen. You're going to have some issues happen. But it's about how you handle it. And you're not always going to be motivated in a particular area that you're in, but you got to keep at it. You got to stay consistent. And it's easy, to, it's easy to stay consistent going back to what you talked to in the beginning once you got that why. Yeah. You know, why are you doing it? You know what I'm saying? Because like you said, you ain't going to, it's going to, a lot of days you're going to be like, man, I don't feel like doing this. No, nah, facts. Yeah. You, you're going to have some problems arise. You're going to have some stuff happen. You know, it, it just, it's, it's part of life. You know what I'm saying? It's part, it's part of it. So I tell you, don't get confused. You've seen other people winning and you feel like they don't have nothing bad going on in their life personally or in the business. It's part of it. You're going to have some stuff happen. You know what I'm saying? But you got to keep at it. Stay consistent. And this, this, this is probably my final question I got for you. What's your biggest, you've been in business 11 years. What's your biggest regret in business? Man, my biggest regret looking on it now is not getting started in business. For me, not getting started in business sooner. You know what I'm really? saying? Yeah, because, you know, a lot of times we do certain things for other people. And as we really look at it, we do certain things for other people. Most of the time we're doing certain things to impress other people, right? We want to impress other people, do it for them. We're not really doing it for us. So when I was going to college at the time, I was going to school to please my dad, to go to school. Hey, I'm going to school. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really doing it for me. When I got in the real world working in nine to five, I was miserable. Real. <laughs> That's 80% of Americans. They're miserable working in nine to five. So I wish that if I knew about entrepreneurship again to business prior to going to college, I probably would have went that route. You took that risk. I would have took that risk in doing it because it's like I'm doing something that's making me happy, not somebody else happy. And I probably would have been on a whole different level <laughs> prior to me, you know, if I would have started business before going to college. So that's one of my biggest regrets that I, I went. I'm not knocking anyone that went to school because I got the education. I was able to network right. with some people, but you don't always have to go to college to become successful. Did college teach you anything about business? Nah, it did not. <laughs> really? it hard. Nah, it did not. And, and, and most people that go to school for business, you don't learn anything about business anyways. The professors that you're learning from, they, they don't, don't have a business. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and guess what? School is a business. It is. That's the biggest. <laughs> hey, they say, they say uh, learning is like one of the biggest financial industries. Well, biggest financial industries. Education. Yeah, learning. Education. Yeah. But, you know, um, that's one of my mistakes. If I could have switched anything around about entrepreneurship, I would have gotten to business sooner and not be afraid to make the mistakes. Because some people want everything to be perfect, not make mistakes. Mm, that's big right there. That's, that's part of it. You got to have failures. And, you know, I was saying, I was thinking about this also. You got to have pains because those pains going to turn to profit. Those pains going to turn to profit. That's a bar. <laughs> growing That's pains in your life, growing pains in your business, you can turn that to profit. Mm. 
mm-hmm. turn out to success. But most people are afraid to go through the pain. They're afraid of going through a growing process. They're afraid to start from the beginning. They always want to start from top. So gotta, start right. from, gotta start from the bottom and then go up. No, that's, no, bro, you that ain't that does not no lie. This the this the final question I got for you. What's your top three favorite books? My top three favorite books. Yep. Um, number one is going to be the Bible. Okay. Number one is going to be the Bible, okay. man. I got so many, so much game from that bi- the Bible in regards to business, Bible, yeah. personal game. And then also business gems as well, too, because a lot of wealth is talked about in the Bible. Like, yep. God wants us to be wealthy. Most people, people don't talk about that. They don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, that's my number one book. My second book is going to be um, Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill. Yeah, Napoleon Hill. Because, like, most people, they don't understand, like, you could think wealth. You know, wealthy people get paid for creativity. You know what I'm saying? You know, the average American middle class or poor people, all they was taught was working nine to five. Working. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? The wealthy people, the 1%, they get paid for creativity. You know what I'm saying? They do the less amount of work, but they get the biggest payout. So if you could think wealth, you could create wealth. And that really changed my mindset. So, and then my last book is going to be 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it really helped me step my game up because you could feel like you're doing something. You know, I'm, I'm killing in my business and in my industry. And you get around somebody else that's going 10 times. Well, 10 what you doing? You're like, hold on. I need to tighten what, I'm, what I got going up. So it did that for me. When I thought I was really doing something in business and someone put me on to the audio book and the book and I listened to it, I said, man, I'm not doing nothing. Like, because sometimes we let our ego get in the way. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm killing it in business. I'm the best. No facts. You know what I'm saying? And I listen to that book. I'm like, man, I'm slacking. I need a 10X everything I'm doing, a thousand X. And after listening to that book, I was able to double my revenue. That year in 2016, Damn, when I listened to it, yeah, that's amazing, bro. Yeah. Speaking of Greg Cardone, I gotta ask, yeah, what did you think about his the, comments that happened recently? The comment, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you know, because I followed Grant Cardone for a minute. He yeah, kind of, I ain't gonna lie, he kind of made me step my game up because my first, one of my, my first business, one of my businesses, I was making, I think it was, um, we did about maybe 200,000 in revenue. I have to listen to the 10X rule, listen to him. I was able to turn that 200K in revenue in my first business to a million dollars in revenue because I was able to 10X, not just my business, my thinking, my personal life, you know, being fit, my mindset, and I was able to turn it to a million dollars in revenue. So I followed him for a minute because it helped me and grow my yeah, business grow. and grow me as a person. But for me, I don't think he had bad intentions, but it's like, you got to know, hey, certain things that you shouldn't say. That's kind of my, my mm-hmm. take on it. Like mm-hmm. you, certain things that you can't say. You know what I'm saying? Because one, it may not be your place to say it. Yeah. And you got to be cautious of what you say. But, but vocabulary yeah. is everything. It is everything. And I, I don't think he's a bad person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think he's a bad person. I don't think he meant it in that way, but he probably wasn't, th- wasn't thinking. It's like, hey, let me say X, Y, and Z. And it's like, you got to understand and it, it goes both ways. Like, yes, you get to a certain level. You could maybe do certain things, say certain things, but also... You can't do certain things and say certain things because you had a limelight. Like people's watching you. You know what everything I'm saying? Like everybody's watching everything you do. You know, look at you know these these uh, NFL players or sport players. They make one little mistake. It's over. It's over. So you got to be kind of cautious on what you you know what you say and how you move. So that's my take on it. Like he should have been more cautious of his vocabulary and what Definitely. he was saying at the time. But I don't think he had bad intentions. But you just got to be cautious. Certain things you you can't really say. No, that's that's, that's definitely facts. The, the the higher levels you hit. You gotta be. You gotta watch your mouth. Yeah, it's for sure. And before we wrap up, man, I just want to say, man, I definitely appreciate you taking the time. Not to come no doubt, out man. This was fire, bro. You gave a lot of game. And let the people know where they can find you, follow you, become a, a student of yours, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure, for sure. So if you guys want to tap in with me, you can follow me on Instagram at Mr. Eugene 06. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, EugeneFanFan.com. Um, and we do a free master class uh, once a week, you know, giving you guys game on how to get started in Airbnb, zero money out of pocket and really take things to the next level in your life financially and also gain that time freedom. Um, but also what our team put together, if you guys want to tap into our next master class, um, you want to go ahead and text BNB1 at 41372. And then you guys will get the link on how to tap into our next free masterclass and get the information locked in with me. That's love. Tap in, y'all. Y'all, y'all, everybody that's watching and listening, y'all definitely tap in, especially if y'all want to get into Airbnb. And I'm gonna make sure I put the, that all those links in the description yeah, 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 of this yeah. podcast. So and y'all can follow me on all platforms. I'm at Xavier uh, C. Miller in the podcast, Million of Mindsets, everywhere. And this that's all I got for y'all on this week's episode of Million of Mindsets. See you guys next week. Peace. Let's go.